question for the two of you. Okay, uh, you both have a foreign blood lineage, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Sir. Okay, how will you go? How will you going to show your Filipino side during the course of your respective competition? I believe that being Filipino is kindy. I I was raised by a Filipino mom, and uh, I acquired the values that a Filipino should have, especially the respect, um, the culture, and most especially the hospitality. And I think I can show that to the world through our candidates uh, within the following days. And I believe that Filipino, being a Filipino anymore, uh, right now, is not just about your blood, but it's about the heart. You can have the blood of a Filipino, but your heart is in another country. But I am a pure Filipino in my heart, and I'm proud to say that I'm from the Philippines. Thank you. How about you, Nadine? Hello. So as my brother Junichi said, it's all about the culture, how you show it. And I've learned a lot, even though I was born and raised in the Philippines, uh, in the UAE. I came here since 2017, and I learned a lot of culture from different part of the Philippines. Different languages there is, different, different uh, cultures like Baguio. Like, I can't wait to go back to Baguio again. So it's how you show your culture and how you love the way the people express the culture. So it's all about culture and learning it. And as soon as possible, I'm trying to learn more Tagalog, but <laughs> okay. okay, in your opinion, uh, what is your uh, biggest strength that made you win your the, the national uh, pageant and and now you're you're representing the country? Um, definitely, I think it's a no-brainer that physically I'm not that. You know, they're a typical winner of misters, but I believe what they saw in his genuinity, um, they saw my heart and passion to be an ambassador and spokesperson, especially um, in opening topics that could create change to our society because we could not just be quiet about what's happening in our little community. We should open it, and I'm fearless about it because when we are aware, we can know what to treat what causes to treat and when we do treat that we can act as a community and heal as a community and be better citizens of our communities. So your biggest strength. Your, yeah. My biggest strength. Yeah. So as we were going through this journey from out of the world Philippines, everyone was not that eager to get the crown. What, what was my strength exactly is to let everyone do their best because whoever is worthy enough to hold the crown is going to present us all at the end. So it was fun and it was a journey that will never be forgotten, but my strength was uniting everyone together. Uh, what part uh, of uh, runway model and man of the world uh, competition do you look forward to? Uh, Definitely it's obvious it's the Q&A. <laughs> okay. It's only the Q&A because I believe that that's the time that we can hear the substance of a person because we should really focus more on what a person can offer because we could on reminding ourselves that this is a platform for ambassadors to create change but you know we should give that a part of the program, uh, a very, very big, big uh, focus because it's the time where people listen, people can relate, and then people can reflect on that they can be inspired as well. So. What was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> what part of uh, the competition, in your case, uh, Man of the World, do you look forward to? Definitely meeting everyone. It's like going through. 40 countries at one time and learning different kind of words from different countries and plus mm -hmm. as I said it's not all about the crown mm -hmm. if you learn from one another you may get the crown but if it's worthy enough why not mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you very much thank you so much thank you very much
match, finalist number one. <laughs> uh, next, we have from Manila Standard, Edon Concepcion. Uh, we'd like to know, you guys, we'd like to know what's inside your hearts, guys. So how do you feel raising our flags uh, in your international competitions? One word, one simple word. Proud to be What about you, Um, Definitely a dream come true because um, way back in Cebu, I never thought of being a model because I don't look like one. I always compare myself to other people that I cannot be a model because I'm not tall enough, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not muscular enough. Uh, it's because I don't have someone to look up to that represents me. And I believe that what brought me here is my willingness and my, my dream to represent other people who are like me. You know, like we can also be a model uh, no matter what we look. And it's truly a dream come true that made it so far because right now I'm representing the Philippines and never in my wildest dream that I'm going to say Philippines in an international stage. And this is not just for me, but all to those who are, uh, you know, neglected and uh, who are told that they cannot. So, yeah. Wow. I love question. Okay. Uh, between uh, these two options, what would you choose? A crown? or a long-lasting legacy or good image as a thing? For me, definitely, it's the long-lasting legacy because you can look good anytime or you can have a crown, but it will just last a year. But the imprints and the, the, the people that you touch, especially their hearts, the values that you instill to them, the change you have created, will go a long way even if you die. So I believe that a legacy is more important than me. So. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> 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 so the legacy and the image. Because these two things, when you pass away, will stay in history. But the crown can be snatched away. Next question. Yes. Okay. Who's your favorite of national or world icon and why? Uh, for me, definitely, um, it's Angelina Jolie because she's a woman of power and has break so many stereotypes, especially at her job. But she never forget to be uh, to remain her uh, to remain grounded. And most especially, she never forgets to help people. And I believe that no matter how high you get, or no matter how many millions you got, never forget to help people because at the end of the day, you leave a legacy for the a lot, huh? <laughs> okay, world icon. I go with Elon Musk because he's striving for the best, and he's still striving, even though he's the most powerful man right now, most richest man in the world. But he's still striving for the best. He lost a lot of rockets. He spent a lot. He invested a lot. But till then, he keep going. He never stops. So yeah, that's my answer. Perfect. Best of luck to both of you. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you very Thank much. You. Next, we have uh, Edge Tinoria from Argentology uh, Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Alright, I'm very new. I'm very new. I'm very new. I'm very I'm very I'm um, for me, yes, because everything that I say is being uh, picked up by people, and I just want to put out words. Did you say no question? Yes, well, it's not about it. Yes, well, it's not about it, because you know, uh, in this industry, they always look for mistakes, not for perfection. So. As much as possible, I want to be genuine. I want to be who I am so that people will say that, oh, 
ano din pa sila, they're like easy going lang, not like really prim and proper and have to be serious. So that's the time it became relatable. Alright, thank you. Okay, this is my question. How has Scarlett changed you? I mean, siyempre sikat na kayo, no? So, how has being um, Mr. Runway Model Philippines and Man of the World Philippines changed you? Changed, I mean, yung title na to. How does this change, ano? How has being um, Mrs. of Philippines King, uh, title king holders changed you? It made me more responsible and made me more focused on whatever I want in life. So right now, what I want is to enjoy it while I can. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for me, aside from the opportunities and most especially in uh, the exposure that I've got, um, definitely an uh, elevation in responsibility because I'm not just now responsible or being an ambassador for my country or in a national level, but I'm now, I'm now vying to be an ambassador for the people of the world. So it's a bigger responsibility and I have to mold myself to connect to other people, even outside of our country. How would you describe the Philippines to your roommate? Of course, who has no idea about our country. <laughs> um, definitely, it's fun. Fun. We are all about fun, right? From the food, from the places we go to, and most especially to people. And fun is very important now because from the pandemic, we didn't have fun, right? We didn't have fun, but now we are given a chance to be better and to start over. And I think that joy will be our, our answer prayer to everything that we have been going through. So. So since I was in UAE, so too many people start saying that it's more fun in the Philippines. And I'm like, what's the meaning of that? I didn't know. Like, what do you mean we're more fun in the Philippines? You can have fun anywhere. So when I actually when I came here, 2017, that's the time I always look at people. They always smile. I'm like, why is people always smiling? And that's a quote. I say, yeah, really, it's more fun in the Philippines. Even though you're down, they always put a smile on your face. Last question. So if you could pick a theme song to describe your journey, Man of the World and Runway Model Philippines, oh, my Runway Model International Fashion, what song would you choose? Um, definitely How Kamay by Yen Constantino. down your image to be serious of But yeah, definitely How Kamay because in this journey, I'm not just um, competing um, alone. Um, there are people who believed in me from my parents to my manager. I didn't put um, monetarily anything in this budget. Everything was provided to me and I'm so thankful that there are people who are willing to spend and believe in me even if other people didn't. So it's their helping hand that hold my hand that made me believe that I can do it. And now I'm here competing internationally. So thank you. Thank you so much. 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 So that's my entrance song. Like I'm here right now. It's <laughs> like the greatest love of all. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, congratulations in advance and uh, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you very much by uh, H. Tinoria by Anthology 101. Next. Question. 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 It will reflect in your name. So yeah, that's the most important thing. Uh, 
what is the most important thing pageant winners should be teaching young people, especially young men? Um, definitely uh, to to never focus on what you look like because for a very long time male pageantry has been visualized to be you have to be stunning you have to be six foot tall or you must have that six pack abs but i want to teach men that we can also be an ambassador of change just like women they have been moving forward when it comes to their advocacy and i think men are being left behind and still being visualized and it has to stop uh, right now and it would start in them as well so that's the value that i want It's too long, sorry. You think that we can move it to some young boys and so young men, uh, older men saying advice to young fellows. All right. So first advice would be take the risk. If you want to be someone, just take the risk. Keep trying. Never give up. Keep going forward. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Val Philippines. Joy Arkin. Next, we have um, Eventology. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. My question for you two is, uh, how would you balance being the host candidate and competing competitively in the pageant? <laughs> so, just like... Uh, uh, Philippines is our home, so just like any Filipino would do, we welcome them in our home and treat them as our visitor. Sa ano pa sa sa tagalog pa bisita natin sila, so we should treat them with kindness and we should be hospitable and offer what we've got in the Philippines. And just like in my competition, I balanced it by enjoying it and not focusing them as my enemies, but focusing them as my visitors in our lovely home. So, I mean, first of all, I'll be telling them, I'll be teaching them the culture in the Philippines. Even though they're in the Philippines, I'm interested in their culture too. To pay their respect and keep the balance. And mostly because they're here in the Philippines and going to Baguio. So I have to be learning more of the Filipino culture in Baguio. And at the same time, I want to learn their language too. But first, I'm going with Tagalog. Still going there. Continue. <laughs> Thank you. My last question would be, uh, after the pandemic, why is it important for, for us to have uh, events like events or pageants like this? Um, for me, definitely, in a country in where people, um, and especially pageantry, is one of the most sought-after Olympics of the people, so that it brings joy to them. And aside from that, it brings hope. So it comes together and it creates a, a beautiful concoction of remedy in the sadness that the pandem pandemic has given. So, you know. <laughs> Interacting with people is the most important thing in uh, interaction. To give the confidence to some to someone, if their confidence is that low, you can interact with them and speak up to them. And of course, they'll reply to you back. But by texting, social media, you can ignore that. But if you're face to face with someone, you'll see that rude, rudeness if you ignored it. So interaction, it will give the right speech, right voice, words that you want to say. Thank you. Congratulations to, to the both of you and you best, so best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you for the... I'm going to go concoction. I'm going to go to the concoction. We have Jerome, Jerome Francisco. Hi everyone. Hello. So, I'm going to go to the concoction. So, my question is, um, both of you competed in the middle of the pandemic last year. And now, you will be competing still in the pandemic. Uh, so what do you think is the importance of pageants, especially now that we're still reading from the effects of the pandemic? So sadly, maybe not. As my advocacy right now in my world, Philippines, uh, that is already, it's all about physical and mental health. So you have to stay safe, keep your body in shape, health in shape, keep your mind checked. So that's the most important thing. If you're entering and interacting with people, communicating with people, know that you're healthy. 
Because your community system will say stop. Thank you. Uh, for me, man, just like what I said, right, is uh, big entertainment, uh, especially to the Filipino people. And most especially, it is a platform and where we could, just like, like Nadim said, to voice out our own advocacies and where people can also relate to. But the most important thing is that these are organizations that are willing to help communities. For example, Runway Model Universe and I have already, um, during a typhoon in Cebu, I have already given a lot of um, um, groceries and foods that they need uh, during the time like was, uh, it was uh, scarce in our community. So these are not just about beauty, but it's about organization helping the community in times of needs. So that's the relevance of pageantry as well. And I want to know, a lighter question. Yes. I know you're both you're busy now with your preparations for your respective international pageants. So if you're given a day to just uh, do whatever you want, not anything related to your preparations, what will you do? To eat everything twice. <laughs> 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 Definitely to eat everything I want, um, twice, thrice, because you know I'm part of preparation is diet, but Kidding aside, yun talaga yun ano yung main concern because as a veterinary student, I get stressed out and I'm a stress eater. So during my preparation, it's not allowed. So if after this and given a chance to do that, so, so eat everything twice. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Giving my parents a hug. Oh. Thank you and best of luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Blue Francisco. And um, we have also questions from their brothers. Let's start with um, Derek Allen Lochenko. Hey, misters. <laughs> and Derek Lochenko, finally, who's the answer. Hi, Derek. It's so nice to meet you. Who is your nurse? It sounds so feeling of the other one. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Among your ano, so much that it's a mystery of the Filipinas. Who got the prettiest smile? The joke. Stigle, ito na talaga yung question. Ah, uh, to be may one Filipino or Tagalog word na pwede niyo pa ito sa co candidate niyo sa international ano yun? If there's a baby, if there's one word you can teach a Tagalog word, why would it be and why? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I would go with Mabuhay, bro. Oh. Yeah, Mabuhay. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> because if they went to another country, if they learned a new word in the Philippines, and people don't know the Philippines, and he act and said, Mabuhay. So I'm say, what's that word? It's like, oh, yeah, it's welcome in the Philippines. Like long live me knowing the Philippines more. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nadine Rosing. Um for me, um, um it's not a word but it's words. So um may kailangan ka ba? Because I believe that in a country and where you are not familiar with, um I think we should teach those types of words so that we can understand them more. And uh, we can, uh, as a host country, we can give them what they need because at the end of the day, we should take care of them in our home. So, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Junichi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>